I'm just happy to be in the right place at the right time. I think I'm lucky to be there. There's some beautiful lilting quality about Bistari that transcends a lot of things, you know. It's my go-to song these days. Every song is like that. I like it. It works for me. Now let me see if you like it or not. Okay. Hi Gautam, welcome to Film Companion South. Hello. This is going to be a music-centered interview. And one of the things that we always wait for in a Gautam Menon movie is the music. What is the key to getting good music? I mean, one is obviously, I guess, hiring the right person, but then you also hire people that have not been proven in music. What is the key to getting good music? Like when I brought in Darbuka Shiva for this film, everybody was like, why not Rahman sir or why not Harris? And everybody, as in the people who were putting in the money and people who were like calling the shots and all that stuff. So I did ask Rahman sir and he said at this point, it looks a little tight for him, considering it's been three years since we started working on the music. It, could, it would have been fine, actually, but then you don't know when these things start out, right? So right. he said, over the next six months, will be very tight, Gautam, so why don't you go ahead and film it and all that. So I actually filmed about three or four of the songs within the screenplay without having the song, with just some reference music in my head and just playing in my ear and all that. And then I decided I'll go with Darbuka Shiva, but why I decided was I just felt a vibe with him. That's all it was. The same vibe that I felt with Harris when I met him for the first time. Raja sir was always wanting to work with, right. you know, the legendary Raja sir and stuff. So I just went and surrendered there and at Prasad studio and said, sir, let's do this and all that. Rahman sir was also somewhere within that, you know. But I think it's just the vibe that I felt with Shiva that resulted in this combination, you know, coming together and the music. Because I didn't know anything at all about him. I released uh, the album that he'd done earlier called Kidari. Right. And he played the songs for me and I felt something good about it when I listen to the songs and what he spoke about music in general. Cut to a few months later when I went to him and said, let's work on this film and this is the storyline and this is the songs and this is what I have in mind. And I can even show you visuals because I've shot some of the visuals. From that night onwards, he started sending me, you know, pieces saying, right. this is what I thought for this particular moment. This is what I thought for this particular song and, and you know, it was a tune of Maruvarte. And it completely caught into me and I was with it and then I took it to Tamre and so there was no looking back. I don't know, I guess I'm just lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Um, I know you don't agree with the songs of Nidana and Ponosan to a large extent, but I was very happy getting those songs right. at that point, you know. So I'm, I'm just saying it because, you know, you know me, I, I say it as it is. So I'm just happy to be in the right place at the right time. I think I'm lucky to be there. No, but when you say vibe, you're entrusting a pretty big thing to them. See, I can understand Minale because that's your first film, Harris is new, whatever. Nobody has any expectations from a Gautam film. But by the time you're here and you've got this series of albums, the expectations of a Gautam and an album are something. So when you go to some, like the Adar Bukashiba, now of course you're vindicated and all that. But you know, at that point, is there a bit of nervousness? Because you don't have that nervousness with a Rahman or a Raja, Raja, Ile Raja because you know, they are proven musicians. But when you're going to someone brand new, is there the thing that, oh my God, I have this reputation in the market, is this guy going to deliver? No, not at all. In fact, on the contrary, with Rahman sir and Raja sir, there's more because they've already done a lot of stuff. Oh, even if you lose somebody's song, it's easier to listen to it. You know, it's, it's, you know how people talk. Right. Generally, I've not been in that space at all. For me, somewhere I narrate the screenplay with the songs in it. And I think I'm able to inspire them a little more maybe than probably the next guy right. who came before me or I don't know. And then I leave it to them. There's never any, uh, you know, can I get this or can I get that sort of a thing. The mood of the song in terms of the visuals and why it's there and the story is given. Like for example, Tali Pogda, which we've spoken about. Right. For me, the song was always in at the beginning of their accident when these right. two people are on their journey. And narrated the narrated Rahman so exactly like that. And he immediately came up with this idea, right. this, this loop of words, you know. And he sent me this tune much a little later. We got the song ready and then the film also took some time and then we went to picturize the song much later. Everybody said the song, you know, has become so popular. Why don't we change the concept? And right. I said, no, but this is not what this, this is not what I said when I got the song from Rahman sir. I inspired him like this, so it's only fair that I shoot it like that. Okay. So it's it's the visuals that are in my head which I am able to Convey. tell the music director and then from there, you know, what he gives me. And very honestly, till today, even with Shiva, with Raja sir, of course, you know, he gives you a whole plethora of tunes. With Harris, you can always tell him, Harris, can we get something else? I've never asked for a second tune or a second option with anybody. Okay. From Harris to Raja sir to Rahman and even now, uh, Darbuka Shiva with Karthik on the Undraga originals, 
whatever I've heard talking about a situation for the first time and whatever comes to me, it's grabbed me and I've taken it happily. It's mm-hmm. never a, can we tweak this or can we change that, at least so far, and I'm happy about that. Like, how do you start? Let's take uh, one of my favorite songs from your films, which is Anal Mele Panituli, right? It's about a couple, yet it's not a love song. It's more about the gradual growth of a relationship yeah. and two people coming together. So that's a tough one, right? In the sense that it's... it's so do you give keywords like maybe wistful, uh, you know, something like that to kind of describe the mood of, of what you're looking for? No, again, the graph of that song in terms of, you know, what you finally saw was there. Okay. It was a pretty much a bound script when we went into a shoot and... This was a journey of this girl called Priya, who was traveling to Dehradun to meet this boy, you know, who's now an officer in the army. Right. And they've known each other from childhood. And there is this graph in that song. And they end up spending some time there. And I thought, you know, once she proposes to him and he realizes and, you know, he, she comes back to meet him. I'm, I'm just talking about the song situation. I gave this to Harris and right. I just sat back. And he came up with this. Right. That's all it was. And it connected. When we got the song done after the lyrics and the singer came in and all that, everybody said no. Uh, this is the only song that's, you know, going to be like the last on the list and let's, you know, I'm, I'm talking about people like VTV Ganesh who was a big part of the production at that point, people in my team. Generally, everybody said no. Right. Harris asked me, right. I think, I don't mind mentioning this right now, the only two people who supported that song to large extent was one was Harris's wife, which Harris told me later saying, she said this will really work and to go with this. And the other person was me. I just sat back and thought this should work. And I picturized it. I had already shot some bits of the song and stuff like that. So it just worked. It, I just sat back and accepted what I came. And Tamare comes in with, you know, the lyrics that just work so beautifully. Yeah. So, so my point is this. It's like what makes you think that I think one of the reasons that that song works is also the mood, right? Which is yeah. a little counterintuitive. It's Correct. not like yeah. I'm seeing this guy, I'm, I'm falling slowly in love for him. There's a bit of sadness running through that whole exactly. song, you know. There's yeah. like... So that also plays a huge part yeah. in shaping the song, yeah. right? So you that's something you convey to Harris. I conveyed that to him and right. I said, we'll keep this. This is different from Adiye Kullude and Enjikul Peidadum. Right. And we had already had those songs, right? right. So this is a marked, marked difference from those two songs, which he got. And I remember the composing was with the tablas and the way he set up the song and all right. that, which is always a, oh, in the part of the Mario song, Venuma, you, you'll sit back and think, right? That never came to me. Right. It came to everybody else around, with all due respect to them, because they right. all want it to be in that commercial space and you know, you've got a great album and why not one more song that will take it forward. It was the last song that we composed. Right. Uh, but somehow it, it struck a chord. So when you hear this outline of a song, do you have an inkling of how it's going to shape up? Yeah. Because let's take Ile Raja, right? He's legendary for playing something on the, I mean, at least in his heydays, he was legendary for just giving you sketches of tunes and then he'd go and then with the orchestra, it would become some altogether completely different, yeah. magnificent thing. Yeah. So a lot of people kind of cannot make the leap from the one, the light tune that Hilaraja gives them to the final finished project, uh, product because there's just so much that he adds True. from this to that. Are you good at that kind of making that leap? I think except to the Raja sir, where it was left completely to him, where the, the composing was very different because it was done, uh, you know, on the harmonium. And uh, for every situation, he was giving me two to three tunes. Right. And I had to stop him saying, no, I like the first one, so let me take that. And we recorded just the vocals with the click track sort of a thing. So I didn't have a general idea of how the production would be. Right. Whereas in every other song, while composing itself, you get the groove and Harris sets the groove and even with the Rehman sir, there's already a sort of a platform set up, you know. Right. With Raja sir, just with this one film, it was only the vocals that was there with just a click track. It was me who just today, I'm saying, let's take the production to London. Right. Let's fix, fix this entire song, the, all the songs in the album with musicians from there. He said, are you sure? I said, yes. So that's why he decided on this particular sort of an idea. We went to Bombay and recorded the vocals and then we shifted to London where he produced the album with writing notes and, you know, giving it out to all the musicians and we sat back and just watched it unfold sort of a thing. When that kind of production came into being, I understood that, okay, this is what he can do with a song. Right. Whereas I'm just saying for, as an example and with all due respect to him, if I had produced that separately, it wouldn't have been that, it would have been something else. But that's exactly what I'm getting at because... So which is why I said, except with Raja sir, where I left it to him completely, with everybody else, it's in the zone that I wanted to be in. Right. 
only with him it was like i left it to him sort of thing right because it's like you hear the outline yeah. and then suddenly it's like expecting to know what the final body is by just looking at the, uh, an yeah. x-ray Correct. or a skeleton right it's Correct. so like you know right. unmatchable yeah. it's just going with the flow on a whim on an impulse or like an, how i write again instinct yeah just like how i write i have no idea i just take it as it comes there's right. not even a you know this is a story about i don't have that also i just take it from the first word and i see where it's going where i'm writing something about two people who met in london right. and it's just going you know without any clue as to where it will go is it an action film is it a love story i have no idea i know i'm going to pitch it to a big star right. who might expect an action film but then it might just be a simple love story but then it will be conversational and it will be mood and all that stuff so it's exactly how the songs and the music and everything has unfolds for me and i'd like to put it out for you to tell me whether you like it or not you right. know that somewhere i've been like that throughout so you said that you always took whichever music director it is you always took the first tune that they gave you yes. so you've never really said this no. tune is not working for no. me or i'm no. rejecting this tune no in never. fact uh, katre konjam was just a pallavi and when i heard it and i heard the the lyrics that muthu kumar gave and kartik sang it in the studio at uh, bombay i went up immediately and asked rajesh sir can we make a charanam also right. he said but your situation is a small so i said no sir i'll That's i'll a... make it work so it's only been extensions or you know stuff like that and suggestions within the song but never a change in tune so there's always when you're making the tune there's always the lyricist sitting by it's like sometimes rahman sir will say you know nali compose panla tamare var solidunga sometimes it's just the just me and music director and then i take the song i understand the song completely talli pogade was written like that right. i understood it completely because very tough song to write lyrics for right and then i sat with tamare over 3 to 4 days explaining the meter explaining the nuances of the song so you got the whole thing first the song the the, the, the tune, tune the tune yeah. first and then take taken it to tamare sat across various places and then picked from what she gave me right. she'll give you a she'll give you like 3 4 charanams 3 4 pallavis right. you pick from that and you put it in with her consent and stuff like that i think uh, one of the other examples was a f- song like manipaya where i was not involved in the process at all i think i've told you this right rahman sir knew the situation i i just gave him a situation he said okay you know let's work on it he he wanted to surprise me so he didn't tell me that he was composing he called tamare he composed a song and wrote the lyrics with her and was presented to me sort of a thing so right because that's again one remarkable thing about your albums is that the the connection between words and music is so wonderful and so tight uh which is something that you don't find in a lot in today's music you find it a lot but for you it's been very consistent that that the lyrics have always really they really sit Thank beautifully yes. with the uh thing right from your you know the minnele days yes. so that's again something that that you uh, i think the question is more about it's is it pertinent to the script right because right. it's very with the script right it's not just a song that will be there even nerupe sikimukki nerupe right was a song that we added because the producer said uh, you know get no song venum right after he saw the film and we shot that much into post production of the film right in fact i remember being there on shoot only on day 1 and day 2 brinda handled it completely because i knew intercut to the song there will be moments of uh, the, the two guys the antagonist walking yeah, around yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that and the lyrics were uh, told to tamare to write a certain way even to the varuma right. was about this whole satan walking in and stuff <laughs> like that and i had to apologize many times to harris because there was a word that was used in the song and all that so i think it stays with the script which is why you find the connect i think right yeah. right now let's take two flavors of love song right in uh, varanamairam you have nenjikul peidaru mamare which is a gentle kind of love song now in kaka kaka you have a more rocking flavor of a love song which is yenne konja matri right now actually speaking we now know that it's a rocking song so now i cannot think of another song in its place but did you always like what i'm trying to say is could you have used a soft song for that situation also that mood is put by me put out by me to harris you right. know it's a it's a vibrant you know journey and there's there's a, a woman and yeah. she's she's completely into this guy and she wants to soak it in and all that it was supposed to be that yeah likewise the visuals also were like that whereas this and was even some, the editing was like that yeah it was yeah. like that yeah. it was very to the music you know anthony yeah. is one of his best work actually yeah. and it was completely put together right. we, of course we gave him the shots but it was completely set up by anthony with the music which is why he insists on the final track given to him and he sets to edit right you know and sometimes we go into the produ- uh, filming of the song without the final track right so you have to assume a lot of things whereas with nenjukul pedirum my my instructions or my my description to harris was i want a love ballad then i will right. say ballad it's got to be in that feel is the guitarist who thinks he's on stage right 
when he sees this girl and because yeah. he's a musician and he composes and stuff like that. So it was pretty much meant to be that. There was no two ways about it. So when you do this, do you think of character or situation? Are you saying the cop from Kaka Kaka is this rocking cop, so I want this this kind of thing there or and this Surya is more of a romantic guy with a exactly. guitar. Is that yeah. the character informing the song or the situation? Yeah, more? Both, right? I right. think it's the character with the situation. Right. And um, Surya is actually pretty, he's docile, he's simple, he's quiet in that. He's not even Surya of, uh, uh, you know, Varanamayaram. Right. It was more for Maya, it was more for Maya right. who was like wanting to be on this journey with this guy. Right. You know, so I think it was a mix and match sort of a thing of these two characters and him you know, walking past her and enjoying the things that she's doing. And so it was always a beat like that. It was, it needed to be a pulsating beat. Pulsating, yeah. a rocking yes, kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Is there any album of yours that you feel has not got its due? That something is dear to you, but kind of did not quite reach the audiences the way you I, wanted it to? I think neither I input was in them. I, but the songs were hits, right? I, I, I'm not sure. I think they are. Okay. But there was always one, you know, I think because of the whole orchestral feel to the production of the song, which is very different at that particular time also. I just used to do that much earlier yeah, and yeah. then for this we completely went orchestral, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. The production is not simple guitars and just a beat, there was a lot of strings and you know, it was an orchestral, because all the songs were composed and recorded like that, including Kartre Kunjam and the, see for the climax song it worked because it was two people coming together right. amidst separation and she's about, about to get married and they meet in the night, so it completely worked. Right. But all the songs had that, so I know a section of the, uh, you know, generally talking to people I know it took took them either some time or they completely dissed the music. I feel I felt it did not get its due. No way, no other album. Is there an album that you felt may not work while it was going on? Something that you felt I'm not too sure. I'm going with my instinct here, but let's just put it out there and see. Because some of the songs you must have just said, okay, you know, I feel it. I know I'm feeling it, and therefore it's going to reach the audience or whatever it is. But is there an album that you felt? No, honestly, Bharat, every song is like that. I I like it, it works for me, now let me see if you like it or not. Okay. I'm never confident about... Uh, Even after all these years? No. I'm never confident of finally what it will do. Like, I have no idea what ENPT will do. I mean, I'm, I'm scared, I'm in that zone right now. I've made it to a large extent to how I like how I would like to see this film. No, not the film. The I know. Yeah. So, likewise, the songs, songs. also, I'm right. saying. So, when I hear it... So, for example, with Rahman sir and Raja sir and Harris, the composing happens with me sitting and there's a tune that unfolds and he looks at me and, you know, and he says, this is the tune. This, so, we'll repeat this, this will be the Pallavi and it, it grabs me, it strikes me and all that. And I'm with the tune. I love it and then I totally love it and take it to the lyricist. While recording, I'm completely, you know, lost and I, we pick the singers. Like even Maruvarte, we went, I, I'm, I'm sure Karthik won't mind this, Maruvarte, we went ahead with Karthik first. And somehow I felt it was not in Karthik's zone, the song. Because with Karthik, it sounded like a simple, normal song. And I told Shiva, I'll tell Karthik, don't worry. And I told Karthik later. And we got and sit to sing, which gave it that edge I felt. Right. But there are certain songs that will work for Karthik. So, a lot of thought goes into all this. Finally, when a song is ready, I put it out to the team and a few people. I have no idea whether they like it or not. But it's always been great so far. It's always been good. The reception right. has always been good. Right. Is there a song that you had to be really convinced about? Something that maybe Rahman did or whoever did and said and you're like, okay, I need a day to think this over. I need to, I'm not sure right now whether this is working or not. Let me just give you some. No, honestly, no. never, never. In fact, um, the song from Achamin with the Madameda, the travel song, right, where they go to, uh, Rasa. uh, no, Rasali, yes, of yeah. course, uh, the other song where they go to uh, Kanya Kumari and right, they watch right, the sunrise right. and all that one, was actually done film. for uh, Mani Sir's film. Yeah. So I had, told Rahman sir of a situation like this and then Rahman sir came up and said, we're not using this song for OK Kanmani, would you like to listen to it? I just had to hear the word Mani sir and we're not using it, I grabbed it. Okay. And it, it didn't matter whether, you know, the words were from Bardasan's poetry, whether it will fit into my visuals and stuff like that, I just said, sir, I will take it. In fact, he didn't change anything but just the, I think the pace of the song and, you know, he maybe added in the production of the interludes, he added some strings and all that stuff. Right. I just grabbed it and I filmed it some strange reason, the words are completely... Avalum Nanam. Avalum Nanam, correct. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. But that was something that I heard saying, you know, to somebody else's production, I just grabbed it. But never a situation where, you know, can I mull over it and I'm not sure and maybe I'm being nice. So right. far, no. Thank okay, you. Okay, okay. Yeah. Would you say you have an urban taste in music? Does the music today travel to the proverbial B and C centres? 
I don't have an urban taste in music. Maybe the music in my films because of the characters and the situation sure. are that. But I love folk songs and I can I can belt out you know all the Ghana songs. Right. In fact, when we get together and stuff, I come in only with the Ghana songs and people right. are really surprised because you know um, it's hardcore Tamil. Right. Sometimes there's language and stuff like that used in it and all that. So I listen to everything that comes out. You know, um, uh, like I love Sid's song that's come out now, which is very very different, very minimal kind of a song, but it's it's something it does something to you. The one from uh, Manisha's production, oh, okay, uh, okay. Vanam Kotaka, which Kutu. was released like, like three okay. days ago. Okay. It's being debated as to what's this, and then some people have loved it and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. But I'm saying, I pick everything and anything that I can hear, right. you know. Uh, but generally the music that I kind of use in my films is because of the characters and the stories and stuff like that. And I think today music still travels everywhere. Yeah. Anywhere you go, you know, especially with the young crowd, they listen to everything. And a lot of English music, very strangely, because lots of these youngsters, you know, listen to what the popular songs are and they know their pop stars and stuff like that so so the internet kind of bridged things yeah absolutely okay. yeah because earlier when the film being released in a particular place used to be one of the primary means the song would also get uh, to the public right Correct. like i'm talking about long back yeah but now it's the songs are pretty much out there and the internet is also out there yeah. so you're saying that that's really bridged tastes yes absolutely okay i think anywhere you go there are people who listen to all kinds of music like they know you anirudh they know they know maruvarte and they know the songs from May Adaman also, I'm yeah. saying. So everybody knows everything. everything. I'm saying even in a college like Stella, which is here, uh, so there was an event and I was speaking and they wanted Visri. At the same time, even to all the local folk songs, you know, they were dancing and stuff. So you know it really works across. across. You know, yeah. Now this is the question I wanted to ask you for a long time. How is it that you're able to push Harris Jairaj harder than anybody else? You think so? I mean, yeah. <laughs> See, I think... It's just like, I, I don't know, I was talking to Anthony and he was like, you give me good content, I'll be able to edit it well. If you don't give me good content, I can only give you what the content deserves. So I think it's that, that. that's all it is. Okay. What you give him in terms of the screenplay, the characterization, the mood, what you set up, is what inspires him to come up with great stuff, I think. I've got a nice song, even in Durga Shatram, I'm saying, because of the way you're questioning, uh, your question is only, I'm using that kind of a word. I didn't think there was anything wrong or, you know, there was anything lesser that he was giving. From what I've heard of his music, and I'm not being polite here, because whenever I went, we, the way we've sat and discussed the song has always been very, with a lot of respect to music and production and song and everything. There's never a, okay, the owner Panlanga Wanga, it's never that. You know, there's so much of discussion. In fact, it takes much longer with Harris to come to even him sitting on the keyboard because that much, uh, yeah, so long, uh, in Nordic, so long, uh, that much of conversation happens. Right. So I, if I go at two, 2 to 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. will be discussion about the song. 10 p.m. he'll say, okay, I'm going to come post Panla. He'll take me to another, another suite there and he'll start working on the piano or the keyboard there. And then slowly one tune will start coming out and he'll keep looking at me and we'll grab a Pallu, we'll grab a Charanam. Right. Then he'll say, okay, take it to Tamare, uh, you know, and then we'll get the singer to sing and all that stuff. I've got a really nice love ballad kind of a song for uh, Dhuvana Shatram. And I think it's just how you inspire him, you know. Um, I don't want to comment on what... Right. Generally, is given to him otherwise, you know. So, this one song, which is my favorite, uh, one of my favorites among your Harris collaborations, is uh, Manjil Vail Malele from uh, Vete Yes. Because it's a very unusual structure. Correct. It's got uh, that chorus, when Nilave, Veli Veli Nilave, that, that kind of is going on. Yeah. But then you have the stanza coming in, yeah. which is Manjil Vail Malele. But then you're back to the chorus. So, Correct. there is no Pallavi Charnam happening there yes. at all. It's just the chorus, the stanza, the chorus, the stanza. And then, except maybe the end where, say, Yaro, 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 Ivar. Yaro, 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 Avan. Except that one part where you go like away for a bit. Now that kind of thing again is, is it you or is it Harris? We, we, we discussed exactly this. Right. Let's break, you know, the format. Or a song, Pallavi Charnam Illama Panlama. Right. Either that, Namada Panla. You know, that film we experienced because there was a rap portion, which is one of the earlier rap songs. Right. Where, which he got recorded in New York when he had come to compose with me. He actually went looking for some singers, got somebody to come in and, and record with him and all that. This particular song is exactly the way you described it. We said format when uh, Pallavi Charna Millama, and in fact, I've said that many times to him. Sometimes he'll say, Illa in the song, the format the work kawo. Right. For this, he was ready to experiment, you know, and we did exactly that. And a similar thing happened for this one as well, Tali Pogade. Yeah, absolutely. So Tali Pogade again. Because was, you said the song itself is like a journey. Yeah. So he, he said, I, I, I remember you telling me that they're in the air, and as they're falling, this is what I 
comes to my mind and he he, he, he sang a tune and sent it to me over right. email right and i loved it it went on i still have those you know the the tunes that uh, rahman sir sends uh, sends us so it just goes on and on in a loop which is why i'm saying it's very difficult to break it and pull it out and give it to tamre for her to write it and stuff right the strange part about that song was when he cut the trailer for that song with that song he brought in talli poga they much earlier right and the trailer became a big hit and rahman sir called me the next morning after the trailer was getting you know good word of mouth and all that he says gautam i know i cut the rest of the song to bring talli poga they here and my final song you mati lama so i said sir let me think about it i said for the first time then i sent him a mail saying sir this is this is what you composed with this is what came out original and very organic you know so let's not change that he said okay i appreciate that i won't change it so i remember the discussion about talli poga okay so the last bit i'm going to name all your films and i want you to name one song that's your favorite and why beginning with minale vasigra okay um actually irivari you know is my favorite song in the album that's, because that's uh, a, you know the way yeah. we set it up and it came up just like that and all that and devan's voice is just yeah, so absolutely. apt for that Correct. i don't know why it's like yeah. a yeah true but vasigra only because you know it took us it put us on the map right uh, you know it put harris on the map some of the film was noticed because of that right it was our first interaction with bombay jayshri and i've recorded with her even recently and uh, there was something very soulful and you know uh, holy about that if, if i may use the word and then when we went ahead and did the hindi version also people still remember rena tere dil mein from zara zara right so the tune i'm saying you know was is is really something that i think he cracked and then we managed to although if given a chance i'd like to film it all over again because i think i really absolutely <laughs> you know spoiled the the way the song was conceived and everything because we didn't really get both the actors together you know right, and then we had right. to put in dancers and all that that's on the wish list saying i need to film vasigra and sort of redo the picturization all over again kaka kaka uire no uire because that's one of the songs when that i remember even when we discussed now about uh, ninjukul peedum versus the other uh, you know the jeep much. song imagine i'm giving harris an opening song situation and i'm telling him this guy is in the water and he's you don't know whether he's dying he's taken a shot he's fallen into the water and his thoughts are all about this girl and whether she's alive and it's like we go into his mind and it's only like a 50 second or something like that you see the shift of the watch in that 50 seconds i want a 5 minute song which tells us that there's this woman in his life and he's running after her and stuff like that so he comes up with this groove which when i heard the groove itself i was like oh so the song the film opens with this groove now when you put the song or people are going to sing it's it's played in all the discotheques at that time they're playing it with a remix sort of version which made it even more funkier and techno and all that but it's a sad song the lyrics are painful yeah, yeah. and sad so it's a huge contrast with the beat and the song so it was an experiment right at the beginning you know and i loved it and harris said dairima polanga and all that and i remember the reactions from everybody when i played the song in the car and everywhere so i think kaka kaka is over and over for me definitely wait here to wait here manjal veil because we broke the format it was done you know without a pallavi and a charanam and uh, love the picturization and what kamal sir and jyotika with their looks at each other it was shot by ravi verma brilliantly because we didn't have any lights right we also went on a you know sort of a guerrilla film making sort of a right. thing you know he, was, he he spoke about uh, ravi verma using the ravi verma yeah. he spoke about using the light reflecting of the buildings of the uh, right. the stores so, there you yeah, know the yeah, shopping yeah, stores yeah. there you you know from the lights there yeah, we didn't have tracks or trolleys to move around so he, he you know there, those garbage bins had little wheels on them so he'll put the camera and he'll move it around and all yeah. i learned a lot about filmmaking from him because i really learned that you know light doesn't matter because you can grab source from everywhere at that point right. and kamal sir was so you know into that song i think he started started owning the film at some point during that song so it's it's just a memory there you know for me pachakili mutacharam i think that's a damn good album by the way yeah 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 um siri pen right that's um, one yeah definitely um because of the situation the you know there's this the way we film the song and while composing the song i thought this this is going to really work and we got very interesting singers to sing that uh, right. song they called rafi who came in to sing that song and uh, just the whole experience of watching the song unfold with relatively you know a new singer and stuff like that i think on siri pinal from pachik okay if i were to ask you your favorite love number from all your films which one would that be strangely it's visri okay you know today why uh, strangely because i mean I'm, you might expect me to say vasigra or ninjukul peedum i'm saying right if i are somebody else and i've heard people saying this right. 
but somewhere Visri is stuck and it's not Maruvarte. I know what Maruvarte has done for yeah, me yeah, and yeah. the film and all that. But there's some beautiful lilting quality about Visri that transcends a lot of things, you know. It's my go-to song these days, you know, when I just want to sit back and... And I've heard that recently from a lot of people. So I'd pick Visari right now. Varanam Ayram. Varanam Ayram, it's difficult to pick because, you know, um, there's a lot of emotional connect with the film in the sense. The uh, Mundinam Parthene was, was me writing a screenplay in a song based on what my mother and father have narrated to me about their meetings and stuff like that. Right. So when I narrated to Harris this situation and he comes up with this tune, and it, I told him, can we go in the, in, in the sort of a connect with what Faith did, you know, George Michael. So, see, it's not a rip-off. People, okay, now I see it. Yeah, yeah, actually, so it's not, you can't just say we ripped off. It's right. not that. Right, no, but it's actually, just, till you told me, I didn't connect it to Faith yeah, at all. So it's, I mean, it's just the, you know, just the riff that we use. Yeah. And then change it around, the scale is different and all that stuff. And then it, in, into it comes Mundinam with some great lyrics. Right. I'd actually pick that because of the emotional connect with the song. But then Ninjukul Pedidam, Anal Mele and uh, you know all these songs, you know, I can't, it's one of my best albums if you, including Eti Eti, you know, it was a very different number. We got Shruti Asim to sing Adiye Kolude, you right. know, so the whole experience of producing that music. Um, that Anjala song. And Anjala, yeah, which yeah, of course Harris didn't want to, he said, Unga mari and I wanted to break that. And then he was not getting it right in the sense, like he was trying to make it a little more urban and I, I had to dance and show him what Surya would do in the song, how he's drunk and he's fallen down and he gets up and he says, hey, Sao Molanda and all that. And I had to, you know, dance to show him what the mood of the song is and the beat, the length of the beat, you know, the rhythm and all that stuff. And then he got it. He still insists that in my films, these songs shouldn't be there. But then we kind of made it a little classy within that format. Right, so, right. As an album, it's a very complete album, so to speak. For you. Yeah. Tough choice again, Vinay Thandi <laughs> The first time, the first experience of working with Rahman and what came out first was Hosanna. And I know the reactions from the people in the unit, my family and friends generally when I played them the song. And it came as a complete song to me. You know, he'd gotten Blase in to record the, uh, you know, the English portion, which is already done. Right. And then he said, bring Tamare in. And uh, and I asked him, sir, are you sure, Tamare? Yeah, songs Why would I want to break that? So these are things that you learn from somebody as simple and humble as that, you know. Right. So he, when he suggested bring Tamarin, I was so happy about it and we brought Tamarin and the way she put together uh, that Maru Idayam concept, you know, which is Rahman's idea actually. Right. So Hosanna was the first song that we put together, so that's largely a favourite. But I picked Manipaya because it came as a surprise to me. It was delivered on a platter to me saying come and listen to the song and the way he put it together was, and it, the way the situation worked. The other song was Aro Malay, which you know, he suddenly said, where are you? So I said, sir, I'm in Chennai. Can you come to LA? Uh, I said, sir, okay, when? Now. So I took a flight that night <laughs> and I was there the next evening and he played me some blues guitars that he had recorded with right. somebody there. And he said, can we do the song in Malayalam? Because of this Kerala connect and all that. And uh, are you okay with this? I said, sir, I love it. And this is where the structure will be and all right. that. And I came back, it was just that one meeting. When I came back, he had got Kaitaparam in and got the re lyrics recorded and he got Alphonse in. He had got the song recorded, it was also delivered on a platter to me. So these two songs I'll pick. I just love Manipaya for the way it yeah. starts because there's that wedding, it breaks off, you finally get this feeling that she's maybe feeling the things that he wants her to feel for him. And he jumps over the wall and goes with that ecstasy still in him and he jumps into that catamaran and goes away. Yes. And wow, it's just that, that beginning, that mood, that, that, that's really where, now that you've seen the movie, you know, that's where it also begins to break. Yes. But you know, that, that's, that, that just that situation is, yeah. is just so amazing. It's yeah. just like, it's... And uh, thank you, because I think you've named it as one of the 25 films of the decade. <laughs> Actually, right? I love that film. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy, you, uh, you know, it's, it's so, uh, it's a film that's made for songs. You know, so many of our films, you find them having songs because they are not, but the songs don't belong in them right, or yeah. they could function without them. But this yes. is a, like, this is the kind of romance I think is that way, you know, you're, you're, that genre itself is so, yeah. you know, it just... Sometimes the worry is, am I being too indulgent because I'm working with Rahman sir, so let me get as many songs as possible. Right. Oh, and with Raja sir also. So I, but with Vinay Thandi, I didn't think I was indulgent at all. It right. was very to the script and, you know, we, we pulled out also, you know, you need to know when to pull out, right? Right, right. I think Rahman sir with the score and everything, even the title track, the way you know, as the titles unfold and the music that he came yeah. up with and all Whereas that. something so. like Kaka Kaka, I feel might work even without the songs, you know, True. because it, Absolutely. It's, yeah, a, yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a genre film yeah. and it's a very tight 
uh, cop thriller and yes you, maybe you can I mean of course now we like all the songs and we yes. watch it with it but yeah. you know you take it away and I don't think the movie will actually uh, you know yeah but I think it's just a way of reaching out to a larger audience yeah, yeah. sure you know? yeah. So yeah. That's I think a, yeah. it's a yeah. plan that's all it but, was, but when yeah. you make a movie like that today again let's say Kaka Kaka right I mean the audience today is a lot different from that time I do it without songs you would exactly okay. DN in fact doesn't have songs Dhruvan Shatram has only this one song right and if I give it to Harris now to sort of work on the background score which is going to happen now right if he comes up with song situations for the action and what I've done, then it's up to him. But it essentially has only this one song which I've filmed. Okay. But I, 10 years ago, I would have put in six more songs into the screenplay, I'm saying. Right. Which I didn't even bother doing this time. Neetha ne for Nasantam. Katre Kunjum, somewhere, you know. It it's such an 80s kind of song, yeah. but updated, right? Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah. I remember playing, that's the first song I played to you. And uh, something about that song just, uh, you know, just, uh, it was a home run for me. I think it, it just, you know, drove that nail right in and Motu Kumar, uh, you know, uh, right. uh, the lyrics and everything. I love picturizing that song. It's also in the film, it's a song in which in the Tamil film, Nani appears and in the Telugu film, Jeeva was there. <laughs> so we had fun, you know, filming that song. A journey to meet this girl whom you not met for like five, six years and there's been this, you know, strain in relationship and there's expectations and what does she expect from me and right. it's a great situation to be in, I thought, and we loved filming it. Right. Yenayar Indal. Yene Arindal has, has this sort of reprised version of um, in the female voice, right? Right. Uh, which I'll pick as, uh, you know, really? obviously the tune, it's the okay. same tune. Okay. But something about this slightly altered version really worked for me with the female point of view of her coming into this house. And from her point of view, you see this father and daughter who are actually not even biologically, right. you know, father and daughter. But somewhere through the little girl's eyes and talking to this man who's a cop and now retired and all that stuff, you know. So, it was Harris at his best, I think. And, uh, you know, Chinmay is very soulful rendition and all that stuff. So, I'd pick that. Achcha main vedu maade maadea. I think Tali Pogad is the popular number, but I'll pick Rasali because it was, again, the first time we set out to do something together. And it was completely Rahmansar all the way. And first, I, first time? As in for this film, for okay. that particular for that, film. Okay. Yeah, for that particular film, it was the first time we sat to compose and all that. And I had already shot some moments of the song. And then there was some lip sync portion. So then he got the song, he came up with the idea of uh, Ra Sali, you know. So he said, why don't we, it's a journey. So why, why can't he talk to this imaginary bird that's flying ahead, you know. And there's this connect between, so, and he said, don't shoot the bird and all that. But it's just that, you know, there's some visual, reference or yeah. something like that. So I said, yeah, sir. It was set up completely by him. And those classical, you know, uh, overtures or whatever you call it, was done after he saw the visuals okay. of this couple going into this village and staying with his family. Right. It could have been treated very differently, but he decided to bring in these Carnatic types, type yeah. instrumentation and stuff like it was yeah. completely set up by him and given to us. You know, then why won't you like a song like that? That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, finally, Yenaino ki paim tota. I think I'm still with Visari. You know, I've said that before. Um, I know Maruvarte and every other song. But for me, Visari is something that I have to listen to every day, you know, and when I'm not feeling great and when I need to come back to some music, it's Visari with, uh, you know, the way Sid, you know, comes in and Sasha and Tamari's lyrics by itself. So she's an actor, actress in the film. She's just in one film and that too, you know, it's not like she likes to be in that space. But somewhere she picked from that and said, since she's the actress, why can't we have the word Visari, right. you know, with him saying, you know, I, I'm your fan. I know there are lots of men who will be dreaming about you in the night, but I want to be the one man in your dream. And I said, wow, what a concept, you know. <laughs> so for me, the lyrics and the integration of music works completely well with uh, Visari. And it's Shiva's best, you know. And Shiva is so laid back and simple. And, and you know, when you talk to him, he just listens to you. And what he comes up with, you know, I'm saying this guy is somebody to watch out for. I just hope he lands the right film all the time. And yeah, what, he's directing a film. He's now. directing a film. Yeah. I'm sure the music in that will be phenomenal. Yeah. But I hope some of the big directors work with him, you know. And they right, I've had yeah. one conversation with him long back and uh, he came across as a very Zen person. Correct. You know, yeah. that's, that's a... Amazing sense of humour. I mean, what you've seen in Rajasthandram that he did, he's capable of that, but that's an alter ego sort of a character. The other person, he'll kill me for saying this, is a, this is quiet very zen kind of a guy who doesn't want to come for promotions and stuff. Which is why I came up with this concept of, you know, Mr. X, X. saying, I'm sure people are going to think it's somebody bigger and, you know, maybe Raymansar or maybe even myself. I, I heard Raymansar said maybe Gautam has done the music for this film and all that stuff. <laughs> 
but I thought let's put him out without people judging him for his work, you know, and then come out with his name sort of thing. So, so finally, you know, okay, Payam Tota is going to see the light of day. What's it like? You know, just the big weight off your shoulders, anticipation, nervousness. Yeah. So even as we speak, there are issues that we are handling. I think, like I said earlier, um, you know, uh, it's just a, being a victim of the business of cinema. Right. And uh, largely you, somehow you have to go into this to learn and come out and we've done all that now. So, somebody's coming to release the film and, uh, you know, I'm doing a film for the producer and we're doing three, four films to make this work and right. all that stuff. So, yes, it's a huge weight off my shoulder. Um, I'm back in that zone again where the film is releasing and I'm in a nervous state and all that. Thankfully, I know the film doesn't look like it's a three-year-old film. It still looks very fresh and young. It's a very young and vibrant film. It's got action. It's got uh, this love, driven by love. And there's, there's also this brother angle, you know, and it's got family and everything in it. So, I, I've seen Asuran. I know what Dhanush is capable of, but it's a completely different, right. simple, easy, raw performance from Dhanush. He looks good. He's done so well. And... Uh, I haven't met him in a long time. I'm not talking to him also on a daily basis and stuff like that. But I'll never let him down with this film is all I can say. Thanks, Gautam. All the best for it. Thank you. Point Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Hi, this is Gautam Vasudev Menon. I'm sure you love this video. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to Film Companion South.